To many Game of Thrones fans, Westeros is a real place. To the people of Northern Ireland, it is home. Northern Ireland was the principal location for filming for this hit HBO series that has drawn viewers in with its unpredictability and stunning locations. On day one, you would arrive at Dublin Airport and have plenty of time to explore the city. While Dublin is not home to any scenes from the show, there is still plenty of history from the time that Game of Thrones is based on. The Book of Kells, a 9th century manuscript famous throughout the world, is housed at Trinity College. Glasnevin Museum provides a rich history and features a who's who of modern Irish history. Day 2 is a free day with no Game of Thrones sites, but there is plenty to see and do. You may wish to spend some time learning about Ireland's bloodiest battle or an ancient temple that is over 5,000 years old with major religious significance. On day 3 you will take a stroll on Dragonstone or Downhill Strand as it is locally known. It is on this beach that Melisandre burned the Seven and Stannis Baratheon pulled Lightbringer from the flames. Next, take some time in the real world that feels like fantasy with Dunluce Castle and the Giant's Causeway. The Giant's Causeway is where 40,000 hexagonal basalt rock columns dominate the seascape. Admire medieval Dunluce Castle perched precariously on its cliff top. Continue to relive Game of Thrones scenes at Ballantoy Harbour. This sleepy little port village was transformed into the rugged Iron Islands for Theon's homecoming scene. Parts of the beach here were also used to depict Dragonstone as well. Slightly west of here is Murloc Bay. This is the setting for Theon's uncomfortable reunion with his sister Yara, and it is also home to the scene where Davos is rescued by a passing ship following the Battle of the Blackwater. On day 4 you will cover quite a bit of ground in Westeros and Essos. Head north toward Bally Castle, where you will recognise the stretch of road in Season 1's iconic ending. Move further south through Cushendall and on to Cushenden Caves, which played host to one of the most terrifying scenes in the entire show, Melisandre's Shadow Baby. You will then make your way to Cairn Castle, where Ned Stark administered the King's Justice to the Night's Watch deserter in the very first episode. From there you will go west across the narrow sea to Shilanavogi Valley, where the Dothraki, led by Khal Drogo, set up camp during Season 1. After Game of Thrones filled day yesterday, you will take a little break this morning. Check out Titanic Belfast, which is something we recommend everybody goes to see. Belfast is also home to Titanic Studios. Many of the memorable interior shots from Game of Thrones were shot here. After you are done touring the city and have seen Titanic Belfast, you can take a trip out to Loch Ney and Shane's Castle, which was used extensively during filming. The caverns beneath were used as the crypts, underneath Winterfell, the black cells of King's Landing, and Dragonstone's dungeons. Your last day will be packed full of Game of Thrones exploring. Make your way to Inch Abbey, which was the site where Catelyn Stark crossed the river to the twins to treat with Walder Frey and make an ill-fated marriage pact. Castle Ward in County Down was used to depict the home of House Stark, Winterfell. The 18th century property was transformed for the memorable scene where Robert Baratheon and his court arrive in Winterfell. Nearby in Audley's Field was where Rob Stark set up camp and the Kingslayer was captured and subsequently released. Hop into the farmyard or walk along the shores of the loch before making your way further south. Continue to your hotel at the edge of Tollymore Forest. This is the site for the very opening scene of Game of Thrones, so beware of White Walkers. On day 7 you will make the journey home.